This exact funnel that I'm going to break down has allowed me to attract multiple high ticket clients that one, come to me, so they find me, I don't even outreach for them, and two, they are pre-sold on what I offer and makes a close very easy. This has worked for $2,000 clients all the way up to $7,500, $8,000 clients. And again, this funnel works best for a B2B offer and you need a working offer and an ICP. I gotta mention an ICP in here. An ICP is an ideal client profile or an ideal client avatar. You need to have an offer, one, in mind, and two, you need to know exactly who you're targeting, the demographic, their age, their gender, what they do. You need to have an exact demographic of who you're targeting. It will make this funnel much easier. If you do not have an offer in place or an ICP identified, I will have another video on that that will hopefully pop up here by the time you're watching that. Uh, and you can go ahead and do the exercise because none of this will be beneficial if you do not have an offer, if you do not have a ICP in place. All right. And again, this has allowed me to sign multiple high ticket clients. This is sort of what the funnel looks like. And I even give a nine step framework at the end that you could copy and paste to get started implementing this funnel. I'll unblur everything as we go. I'm not gatekeeping anything. I simply don't want you reading ahead and getting confused because this all happens in a sequential order. So let me explain. If you have any questions, DM me on Instagram. I've answered thousands of questions. No joke, thousands of questions. And I'll answer yours or just drop a comment. So one at the top of the funnel, we have attention attention on your offer. This is very key. I try to point the red arrow to on your offer. That's why it's underlined. You just don't want attention on your face or your name. You want attention on your offer. Every single outreach message that you do as you run, whatever you do, you need to make sure people are getting through to see your offer. If you just outreach someone and make contact with them, and they don't see your offer. That does not count. You need eyeballs on your offer and what you do. All right. That is attention. That's what we're talking about. And as you've probably seen on the internet before, there's multiple ways to go about getting attention. There's cold and warm traffic. Cold is cold call, cold visit, cold email, cold DM. Warm would be ads, referrals, and content. Those are the main ones. Content being social media, posting on YouTube, posting on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. All right. Now, the reason that I mentioned offer and an ICP, this is why it's so important, why I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, because of these pitfalls right here. So the first pitfall is, one, this is just bottom line. If you don't have attention on your offer, you make no money you make no freedom, right? If you just don't have any attention, if you're not doing any outreach, any warm traffic, any cold traffic, you're not going to get anywhere. That's pretty obvious. Two, attention on the wrong ICP equals headaches and a waste of your time. So if you are getting attention, but you're targeting the wrong people or the wrong people are coming to you, one, you're going to start taking on clients that you can't fulfill for and you can't get results for, which leads to massive headaches. Even though you might get money, it's going to lead to massive headaches. Trust me, the money's not always correlated with the amount of ease. You want money to be a good thing and you want to be happy with the service delivery. Like you don't want to be struggling through service delivery after you get paid. It's the worst thing. It'll cause massive headaches. All right. And finally, this is the biggest thing here is attention on a bad or not proven offer is probably the worst thing. It, it, it is the worst thing. If you get attention and you target the right people and you're in the right market and you get these people successfully on a call and you actually cannot help them, then there is no business. It doesn't work. Guys, you have to actually sell something that gets results. You have to sell something to get results. All right. A lot of people are so worried about the offer and about marketing, about all the stuff. And when they get a client in the door, they're selling something that does not even work. First, you have to learn the skill and make sure it works. If you haven't done so yet, this video is not for you because you have to go out there, work for free, get results. It only takes one case study, guys. It takes one case study, one client to change your life because that's leverage that you could use to market other people. But you have to have that one case study. It has to be bulletproof. You have to have actual numbers and tangible evidence that you are selling something that works, all right? So you can get all the attention, you have the best ads, you have the best funnel uh, that I'm going through, you can have all this stuff. And if you're getting attention on an offer that just does not work or does not get results, it's not gonna matter. So these are three huge pitfalls. If you're not getting any attention, you're not gonna scale. If you're getting attention on the wrong people, it's just gonna be a headache, even though you might get money, which is not as good as you might think it is. And three, if you're getting attention, which is good, but the offer does not convert, it's not gonna work. You have to sell something to get results. I know it's crazy. You have to be good at what you do. I know it's crazy uh, nowadays on the internet, but you actually have to be good at the service that you are selling. So I want to just hammer that home in your head. That is the attention portion. Two is attention to lead. And the way you turn attention from up here into a lead is through interest. And again, this is under the assumption that you could help them. If you're selling SEO marketing services to my 85 year old grandfather, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work because he doesn't have a business and he does not need SEO. All right. So you have to be targeting people that need your help. So all the stuff I'm about to tell you is under the assumption that the interest that you're getting is from people that you could actually help. It's from your ICP. All right. If you want a video on any of these topics, how to target your ICP, all this stuff, how to have frameworks in place to make sure you're hitting the right people, just let me know. I can make a video on all this stuff. But the way you turn attention, top of funnel to sort of middle of funnel into a lead, which is through interest, 
is through these main things. One is heavy social proof. All right. So if you see someone on Instagram that's flexing their client's results, that's social proof. Or even flexing a nice watch, that is social proof. It's ingrained in your head. It's a psychological thing that they have money, they have status. That's social proof. See results in case studies. Again, it only takes one result, one case study to change your life. If you see a case study, they are much more likely to buy. If you could show someone results, they're much more likely to buy. They're much more likely to go from a, yo, you have my attention to, oh, you actually could do this. Oh, now I'm interested. Now I'm a lead. All right. Three is the seven hour rule. Get nurtured. If you watch seven hours of someone's content by nature, it you just attracts that person and you start to believe what they say and get interested in what they have to offer. So if you have watched seven plus hours of my videos, you might be interested in how I actually build out these funnels and use this funnel to book high ticket deals. You might be interested, you might be at the beginning of the funnel, you might be at the end of the funnel. I'm using this funnel right now. I'm going to explain that. And you're going to see that as we go on. You got no gate pick, no gatekeeping. I'm going to show you everything. Four free value or VSL. So if you send people to a free course or a VSL that gives them value, it will turn them from just regular old attention to, oh, this guy's pretty knowledgeable. Now I'm interested. When they're interested, they're lead. Five is they see a product demo. This is more of a wow factor, especially with AI. If you show them some awesome AI product, AI GPT, AI SaaS, whatever, then the product just blows your mind off or blows your socks off, um, blows your mind. Uh, then that will turn into from attention into interest, right? If you just have a really cool product, a really cool demo. And finally, if they really just need the service. Now, this is the best possible client. I've reached out to people that just need my service. It's just the right timing, right? They saw my video. I reach out to them, whatever the case may be. And they're like, holy shit, this is exactly what I'm looking for. When can we start? And they pay me instantly, all right? Now, this is the best possible person to come across, but it is very rare. You cannot rely on people needing your service, right? The best thing that you could do, in my opinion, and I sort of put these in order of most important to least important, in my opinion, is you need social proof and you need case results, case results and case studies, which sort of ties into social proof. You need this stuff to get you going. You need it. All right. And then you have content on the social proof that gets people nurtured. You build out funnels. And then you have a product demo, which goes into content. I mean, this stuff all is intertwined, but you need to have social proof, especially online. Now there's so many people selling the same things. You need social proof. You need to stand out. So that is how you turn attention into a lead. And again, this is turning people that are just, you know, yeah, you got my attention into interested into a lead. All right. And these are the best ways to do so. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Next, you have the prospects decision. They're now interested. They're now a lead in your CRM or however you're classifying them or categorizing them. Now they have a decision. Do they go with you? Do they go with someone else? There's probably thousands of people that are selling what you have to offer. Why should they go with you? Why are you the better option for them? Why are you going to help them out? All right. This is the prospect decision aspect of the funnel. Now, again, common themes here, guys, very common themes. I'm not repeating the same thing because I'm lazy. I'm repeating the same thing because it's important. The prospect decision relies on seeing heavy social proof, seeing results in case studies, getting nurtured seven plus hours, having uniqueness. So this is new, having uniqueness in your offer. Are you just copy and pasting the same thing that you saw on the internet? Are you just copy and pasting offer? Or do you have a unique mechanism? Do you have a unique funnel? Do you have a unique team member or AI agent or whatever to actually fulfill for the service? Intriguing the person essentially. Five would be messaging. Like, how are you messaging the person? Are you following up with them? Are you being personable? Are you a human being? A lot of social media guys that you know, a lot of people won't tell you about is being personable. On my Instagram story, and I, I highly recommend you guys to go follow me there and message me there and talk to me there and introduce yourself. I post a lot about my life, just what I'm doing, where I'm driving to, where I'm visiting, uh, stuff like that. That makes me a person. That makes me relatable. Uh, and that someone else that's just posting and flexing all the time, I might be more relatable uh, than that other person. Thus, I might win over the prospect's decision, all right? It comes down to little messaging, little frameworks, little tweaks in your funnel and in your strategy uh, that might win you deals, right? It's, it's all a very thin line. Uh, the, game is, the game is very complex is what I'm trying to say, all right? And there's so many ways you can attack it. So that's the prospect decision part, all right? I'm not gonna go too much into that. Um, I'm gonna have a whole other video about prospect decision. This is just overlying the basic funnels so I can get to these nine steps that you could go ahead and follow, right? I don't wanna make these videos too long. I want you guys to take action. Speaking of action, action or inaction. This is the final step. So the prospect has a decision, either they take action, boom, they go with you, good job, or no action or inaction occurs and you know nothing happens. So if they take action, they book a sales call, they pay you, etc. something actually happens that goes in your favor, the mission is complete here, right? We just want to use this funnel to book and calls. Sales is on you. Sales is not that hard, guys. Just be good at something. Be confident what you're selling. Have results. When you have results and you have case studies, your confidence is going to go through the roof. And when your confidence is through the roof, you can sell someone anything. I actually love sales because I'm good at what I do. And I know that my service is actually going to help you out. Like this funnel is actually going to help you out. All right. Um, so sales or action. Good. We're not going to talk about that. Inaction. How do we get people from inaction to action? Now, these are another common themes here. Retargeting ads, follow-ups like 
literally following up with them through email, SMS, whatever, content nurturing, putting them on an email list. Uh, and this should say maybe something like a newsletter, right? The common theme of this right here is you must be in front of them constantly. So if they don't take action, you must pop up in front of them again, right? So they click off, they don't book a call, they don't pay you money, whatever. They hop back on Instagram and, oh, I just saw his ad again. Yeah, that's how it works. Or, oh, YouTube just recommending me his video. You have to constantly stay in front of these people. And this is a very good rule of thumb. There's a linear relationship between the time you are in front of a prospect and the likelihood of a sale, all right? So if you're not in front of someone a lot, there's less of a chance you get a sale. If you're in front of people all the time, right, a 10 out of 10, then there's almost a 100% chance that you get a sale, right? Especially if you're competing, competing with someone. Now, I don't want to say there's a 100% chance. It's not even a chance. That's a certainty. But you get what I'm saying. There's a linear relationship by, in, in between how much you are in front of someone and the likelihood that they're going to buy. All right? So you have to understand if you're in front of someone a lot and you have a solution that they're even vaguely interested in, they will probably go with you. All right? Because just by familiarity purposes. All right? So that is the funnel. You have attention. The most important lessons here, you need to ICP, you need to identify who you're targeting and you need to offer that actually works, sell something that works. And if you don't sell something that works, none of this is going to work. Okay. Two is attention to lead. You turn people from just, you know, oh yeah, you have my attention to interested or into a lead by giving them value. The seven hour rule, um, sending them value via sales and then heavy social proof. Uh, and then here also sort of similar prospect decision is very based on a decision turns to action is very based on, again, social proofing, getting nurtured messaging frameworks on uh, being personable and being relatable uh, as human being. Finally, you get people action. Great. In action, you get in front of them. Again, the more you can get in front of them in a structured way, the more of a chance that they are going to buy. They're going to book in a call with you. Now, this is the nine step framework for you to actually implement this funnel for yourself. All right. So one is you have a working offer and an ICP. You must sell something that works. That's, saying, that's like saying something outlandish nowadays. You must sell something that works. You actually have to be good at what you do. Yes, you do. Two, you must know your exact ICP. Again, their demographic, where they live, what language they speak, how much money they have, how much they're willing to invest, how much time they have. Know as many details as you can. If you can really hone in on your ICP, it makes everything much easier. So write that down, all right? And don't continue down this if you don't do these steps. This is here. This is a framework to help you. So please get out a pen and paper, get out something and, and start writing this down. This is like an exercise. And I'll probably turn this into a worksheet um, later on. Two, ensure you could actually duplicate results. All right, so systemize your service so it's not just luck, and then also turns into an asset later on. So this is a little bit outside of the frame of this funnel, but once you actually get results, you want to systemize those results and make sure it's a scalable process. You don't want to do it once and then just sort of do it on the fly again. You want to make sure it's a system. You do When you sign someone on, you do A, then you do B, then you do C, and they get result D, right? That's what you want, all right? And this also turns into asset because if you systemize everything, then you can break it down in content just like this, which turns into an asset. Three, make a case study out of the results you get. Build social proof and results. Again, the common frameworks here, the common commonalities are social proof gets people to take action. Social proof also gets people to turn into leads. So social proof is huge. It's absolutely huge. So make case studies and then build social proof online. Post the case studies on YouTube. I have a framework for that. Post them on Instagram. I have a framework for that. Optimize your profile, stuff like that, all right? Number four, make a video asset on this case study, which is just all I'm talking about. Take this case study. Hopefully, you can actually client interview. That's the best possible one. This one really, really takes you to another level. If you could actually interview a client, the results you gave them, and you could hear someone coming across your channel could hear from your client's mouth how good you are, that is the best possible thing, all right? If you can't do that, just make a case study on the actual results. Five, you want to post to YouTube and then repurpose. So YouTube is an everlasting asset if you do it right. Uh, by the way, like if you want any help, I have free talks with me for 30 minutes. Um, if you're looking to implement this funnel, if you're looking for any advice, it's free 30 minutes for now with me, not any of my team members. It's just me for now. I'd love to talk to you. If you do YouTube right, it's a everlasting asset. I have videos I've posted months ago that are still booking me in calls and still getting me business to this day. And then you're going to use this YouTube video and repurpose it across other platforms, YouTube, Shorts, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, using our repurposing system. If you want to, we have a repurposing system using AI that gets amazing results. It's 90% AI, 10% human. So it turns YouTube videos into amazing other posts for other platforms that bring traffic back to YouTube. And then through YouTube, you book in more calls and the cycle sort of continues. Um, so make a video asset. You don't have to do everything in the beginning. Just stick with YouTube. Make a video asset of that case study and post it on YouTube and make sure everything is optimized. Your SEO, your descriptions, your tags, everything like that. What I say here? Number six, optimize your YouTube to attract your ideal client profile. So when someone comes across your page and they see your case study, 
Um, is the SEO optimized? Is the description optimized? Is the messaging framework and the language you're using optimized to book in a call? Is the thumbnail good so they'll click on the video? Is the script good so they'll stay on the video? Is the positioning of your offer good? All right, have all this stuff dialed in. Number seven, have a funnel and automations that convert. So have a solid landing page. You can go to my landing page down below and you can sort of see and even copy it if you want what I do. But you have to have a solid landing page. Hopefully you have a VSL up there, a video sales letter. You have social proof of past work. You have opt-ins for lead magnets. So like I will give you XYZ funnel, or I'll give you XYZ template um, if you give me your email and then you remarket those people later. You have nurturing sequences for those emails and those leads that you collect. You have no-show, booked call automations, and then obviously you have a newsletter or something to continue to nurture people. And then finally, you attract and close qualified press prospects that come through, and then you repeat the process. So you're getting a client, you're building out a case study or hopefully interviewing them, you're putting that case study on YouTube, YouTube, you optimize the YouTube, the YouTube pushes out that case study to people that are in a similar position. Those people come through your optimized landing page and the automations that follow. They book a call with you and then you sell them and you continue the circle. You continue continue the cycle, I should say, right? It's a cycle of growth if you do it right. YouTube is an amazing platform, guys. And the most important part of all of this, I had to say it, is talk with me for free advice to get all this stuff tailored for you. Like all of this, this whole funnel, again, this booked me in many calls, it's closed me a lot of deals, made me easily over five figures this year. Um, and I think it's life-changing. I think everyone should be doing it. If you need guidance on how to do it yourself, let me know. If you want this whole document, let me know. I'm considering putting my actual WhatsApp number down there so you can just DM me. Just don't be weird about it. It's the first time I'm doing that, but I want a more personal conversation with you guys. For now, it's probably gonna be my Instagram, so feel free to DM me, but probably gonna start up some type of really secluded group soon so I can meet you guys, know you guys, and see how I can turn this funnel or use this funnel for your business. Because I think this, again, if you have an offer that works, if you have past case studies and results, there's no reason you should not be doing this. Let me know if you like this type of video. It's just sort of me yapping or ranting. I think there's true value behind this. One, because I've actually done this. I'm not preaching on something that I haven't done. I have about 2,000 followers on YouTube. We're, we're nearing there. And the YouTube, regardless of the subscribers and the views, it actually books and calls. And those calls convert into cash for my company and for myself and for my life. Um, so this stuff works. Uh, and if you guys want advice, again, on how to do this, book in a call with me. It's absolutely for free. Or if you don't have time for a call, just DM me on Instagram, introduce yourself, uh, tell me about your, your passion and all this. But yeah, if you like these videos, let me know. Subscribe if you want to. Have yourself a lovely day. Take care.